Hey everybody, uh, Steve Apoutsis here from the Dead Space 2 team, executive producer guy. And we're going to do some more questions with Steve. Been dying to see what you guys want to ask in this uh, episode. So let me take a look. Do -do 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 -do. Eric Curtin. Hello Steve, congrats to you and the Dead Space team. I would like to know more about the Hunter or Regenerator. Where did this one come from? Any info on its new look? Well, Eric, uh, the Regenerator comes from the corpses of super badass dudes, and that's why it's so badass. Um, whoa, didn't mean to rip your question. Oops. Um, but yeah, uh, it's actually a super evolved necromorph, so it's just a little bit more powerful than the previous ones that you've seen throughout the game, and uh, that's kind of how he fit in. Ashley Jones. Is there really a kid in the dryer washing machine at the beginning of the game? I felt horrible not being able to let him out if there was. Well, Ashley, you're a very compassionate person, and uh, that's cool that you wanted to help whatever's inside of that washing machine. You know, whether it's a person, whether it's uh, a little critter, uh, we don't really know. We don't really know, but uh, it's something in there, and the mystery will remain. Tom DeCastro. Hello, Tom. Dear Steve, first of all, I love it when people go with the traditional dear Steve. That's awesome, because I do that too. Dear Steve, what can we expect from Dead Space 2 severed in terms of story? Is it going to tell us how the Necromorph outbreak at the Sprawl started? Well, Tom, I've uh, been on record before talking about how I don't like to go to spoiler town or wreck story stuff, and I'm going to remain true to that. Um, Severed does focus around Gabe Weller and Lexi Murdoch, uh, characters that are from Dead Space Extraction. Anything beyond that I really don't want to get into because I don't want to wreck the surprise. Uh, so check it out. It's going to be fun. It's going to have lots of cool stuff in it, and I hope you and everybody else enjoys it. Who designed the exterior look of the Sprawl, and what inspirations went into its brilliant designs? Okay, Grant, so that's a big question. First of all, um, inspirations came from all kinds of photography. There's some great stuff that NASA's done, um, just tons of different awesome space images that we've all seen you know, over the years. Uh, was kind of a big inspiration. The, the people who really built it, uh, Chi, our, one of our talented texture and concept artists, um, kind of did the original early concept. Doug Brooks did the actual creation of the various vistas that you're seeing. And Ian Milhelm was our art director who directed it. So that was kind of the trifecta of the people that worked on it. And the inspiration, as I said, is like, you know, look up at the stars and shit. There's like stars out there and just all the cool photography. And you know, the big uh, theme with it, uh, not that you asked this, but I'm gonna go into detail on it. A big the theme around all of those vistas that you see on the sprawl was really to reinforce kind of where you're at and the fact that, you know, this is a mining installation. You can see that chunk of um, the, the planet that they've been mining the resources from. So we really wanted to reinforce that as well and give you a sense of um, space. So that was kind of a little extra bonus. I know you didn't ask about it, but shoot, there it is. All right, we're getting down to the end here, it looks like. Chris Milliman. What is the stalker exactly? It acts too different from other necromorphs to be human. So, Chris, uh, there's a lot of people that ask that particular question, and it's a good question. Uh, I guess I would say the stalker really, well, you know, you're out on the sprawl. There's animals, maybe there were dogs, maybe there were cats, um, maybe it's an evolution of those. That's what I always like to think of them as, because you're right, they are very different than our typical humanoid um, necromorph. So I think it's a combination between uh, different types of critters that live on the sprawl, because people have pets and they love them, until they turn into stalkers, and then they have to dismember them. Next, Jorge Luis Marquez. Jorge Luis Marquez. I hope I said your name right. Why was Gunner Wright chosen as the voice of Isaac? Well, Gunner Wright is awesome. So that was number one. But really, why we went that direction was we didn't want to get tied into some of the kind of more standard character voices or looks. We really wanted Isaac to remain that sort of everyman. We wanted him to look different, look relatable. And we didn't want the voice to be, you know, 
there's a couple different voices I like to, to make fun of. We didn't want the, oh, this city, we're going to get him. We didn't want that because that's just, what is that? That's silliness, right? And we didn't want kind of the happy-go-lucky one-liner dude popping off lines and being cool. We wanted a guy who was like us, regular people that, you know, had, you know, maybe his voice cracked sometimes. Maybe he didn't sound like a super badass all the time. And Gunner really fit the bill. He's a, he's a super cool dude, super nice guy. Um, but he really understood what we were going for with Isaac, and he just, he just kind of fit, and that's why we selected him. So that's the last question for this episode of Questions with Steve. I want to say thank you for checking it out. I want to encourage you guys to continue to follow us on the Facebook page, and you can follow me on Twitter at Level Up Time. We're doing all kinds of different cool things. We just did a game with devs last weekend that was a lot of fun. And uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on with Dead Space 2 still. So please stay tuned. Let us know what you think of Severed when you get your hands on it. And thanks again for all your support.